Hi, Market Mogul readers. Want to know what people at Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and Bain & Co. read every morning? The Daily Breakfast Briefing. Get all the insights you need in a short, sharp email, and it's free forever. Just sign up at marketmogul.com. Welcome. You're listening to articles on themarketmogul.com. Russian Foreign Policy, Why We Are Not Looking at a New Cold War, by William Mildred. The buildup of arms along the European border with Russia has brought with it increasing speculation of the potential for conflict. The Baltic states now become the epicenter of this concern due to their membership of NATO and the possibilities of drawing major powers into a prolonged conflict. On saying this, such posturing has been an evolving theme in a relationship that has ebbed and flowed since the collapse of the Soviet Union and has included in recent chapters in Georgia, Ukraine and Crimea. Contemporary journalists and commentators have begun to situate these events within the context of what is described as the beginnings of a new Cold War. Of course, this is deliberately provocative so as to attract the maximum amount of attention, but constructing this escalation within that context can be extremely damaging and can lead to a drastic misrepresentation of events within both political and public discourse. A New Cold War During the Cold War era, world order was structured around a bipolar distribution of power that defined and contextualized patterns of behavior between actors in the international system. In its essence, this era was centered on a conflictual interaction between two forms of domestic political organization, spearheaded by the U.S. and the USSR. The U.S. and the extended Western political alliance withheld a public commitment to liberal democratic institutions, the free market, and the rule of law. Conversely, the USSR and the communist alliance championed totalitarian policies and command economies. With this in mind, to simply construct any escalation of conflict between Russia and the West as a new Cold War drastically underpays the gravity of the Cold War and the extent of its domination of world events, and subsequently misrepresents the relative positions of strength that key players have within the contemporary era. Shifting dynamics of power have begun to erode U.S. unipolarity, especially with regards to economic competition from the East. But even to begin to contemplate that this series of events constitutes a return to the U.S. being challenged by the Russians is churlish, and backed by little to no evidence. There is no mortal ideological struggle, no zero-sum game of strategy. Russian Foreign Policy Contrary to the majority of analysis, Russian foreign policy has largely followed a similar path to that which has followed for centuries. Through this lens, its contemporary movements seem more understandable and can offer a viable alternative to the new Cold War analysis. Its objectives are influenced by two key themes, geopolitical insecurity and nationalism. Geopolitics has influenced Russia's strategic thinking for centuries. A key facet of this is the focus on securing access to warm water ports. Russia's sea power is undermined by its geographical position, both in terms of direct contact with adversaries or the unhelpful weather patterns that freeze over the majority of its own ports in the winter. Indeed, securing access to warm water ports can seem to have influenced interventions from Syria to the Crimea. In conjunction with this, Russia maintains a sober assessment of geopolitical realities with regards to the northern European plain, most notably that it is flat. Its strategic liability has been exploited by enemies for centuries, and Russia is no more secure about its weaknesses in the contemporary era. The USSR shadow. Satellite and client states have long dominated this border. However, with this disintegration of the Soviet Union, a number of these states have sought to pull away from Russian influence, and in some cases sought cozier relations with the West. Russia has felt insecure about creeping Western presence along these borders, and this goes some way to explaining recent intervention in Ukraine, alongside an increased suspicion of NATO presence in the Baltic states. Running parallel to its geopolitical insecurity, Russia's foreign policy has been heavily influenced by a nationalism that often recreates itself to suit the needs of the day. Extensive military buildup and its posturing along its western borders, as well as further afield, is in part to enhance a sense of national pride that has been rebuilding since the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Moreover, it serves as a distraction from the increasingly dire state of the national economy due to poor management, economic sanctions, and the fall of oil prices. Nationalism can never be taken out of the analysis concerning Russian foreign policy, especially with regards to Putin's leadership and his willingness to re-establish Russia as the great power he thinks it should be. Conclusion 
Through the assessment of key traditions in Russian foreign policy, its contemporary movements begin to seem more logical and easier to understand. Geopolitical uncertainty and a renewed sense of nationalism have and continue to influence his strategic thinking. And through his lens, one can start to piece together viable compromises to escalating tension. What is not constructive or illuminating is the new rhetoric of Cold War, and continuation of this will increasingly misrepresent both the Cold War and the contemporary era.